Hey everyone, welcome to the Mind Magic's YouTube channel. Here, you will find insightful video tutorials to kickstart your tech career. Appraisals and great career transitions are just around the corner. And if you are the one looking for a brighter career and just don't know where to start, then worry not. Mind Magic's is here for the rescue. Having said that, today we bring you the Node.js interview questions and answers to help you crack that next interview and land in your dream company. Beyond the basics, we want to set you up for interview success. So, we take our list of questions seriously. We analyzed real job descriptions from job sites like Indeed, Nokri, LinkedIn and Glassdoor. But that's not all. We went a step further, surveyed and talked directly with experienced developers, top recruiters and hiring managers. This insider knowledge means our questions and answers are laser focused on what you'll actually face in your interview. We categorize freshers, intermediates, and experience level of questions. Each level will have theory and scenario-based tricky tech questions. With thorough preparation and these top 30 interview questions and answers backing you up, you're standing well beyond halfway through your quest to ace that interview. So grab your notepad and get ready to transform yourself into a Node.js interview rock star. That said, if these are the type of videos you'd like to watch, then hit that like and subscribe buttons and the bell icon to get notified whenever we host. Now, without further delay, let's get started with the top 30 interview questions on Node.js. Now, let's get started with the questions. Now, the questions are from the beginner level category. And first part is general and most frequently asked interview questions and answers. Now, the first question, what is Node.js and how does it work? Now, the answer for this question, make sure that you impress your interviewer. Node.js is a runtime environment that allows JavaScript to be executed outside the browser. It uses the V8 JavaScript engine that operates on single-threaded event-driven architecture using the non-blocking input-output model, making it efficient for handling concurrent requests. Now, the second question in the list. What are the key features of Node.js? The answer. Asynchronous and non-blocking input-output which handles multiple requests without blocking execution. Single-threaded event loop which uses event-driven architecture to manage concurrency efficiently. Fast execution which uses a V8 engine to execute JavaScript quickly. NPM or Node Package Manager, a vast repository of reusable packages. Lastly, scalability which is suitable for building scalable network applications. Now moving further, we have third question. Now the third question, what is the difference between require function and import in Node.js? Now the answer for this question is as follows. The require method. It uses common modules like module.expose and require and synchronous execution. Import. It uses the ES modules or ESM with export and import which supports asynchronous execution. Common JS is the default module system in Node.js but ESM is gaining popularity with new versions. Proceeding further, we have the fourth question. What is the event loop in Node.js? The answer, the event loop in Node.js is a mechanism that allows non-blocking execution. It continuously monitors an event queue and processes pending tasks like input output operations, timers, and promises. It consists of different phases like timers, input output calls, idle, polling, and closing events. Now the fifth question in the list is follows. How does Node.js handle asynchronous operations? The answer is as follows. Node.js handles asynchronous operations using the following. Callbacks, functions passed as arguments executed after task completion. Promises, objects representing the eventual completion of an operation. For example, then method or catch method. Lastly, async or await. Syntactic sugar over promises for better readability. Now, with that, we'll be moving to the next category where we will be facing some real-time scenario-based questions. So, the question is as follows. How do you handle errors in asynchronous code? Provide an example. The answer. The function uses await for API fetching. If errors occur, then catch handles it gracefully. Now, proceeding further, we have the seventh question. What will be the output of the following code? So here you can see a small code snippet on the screen. You just need to understand what exactly 
is this particular code about understand the control flow and you need to predict what would be the output so such questions will be always available in the real time question and you need to have a better understanding of data structures and executional flow now the answer for this question is simple here it is so the answer will be start end now we have the next question how would you handle multiple asynchronous calls efficiently the answer for this question is as follows you need to follow this particular code snippet here promise.all executes multiple promises in parallel improving performance now we have the ninth question which is also some code related so you can see a code snippet here how would you create a simple http server in node.js the answer is here so you can use this particular code snippet here the http.create server method listens for incoming requests and sends a response now we have reached the 10th question in the list today what happens if an unhandled promise rejection occurs now the answer for this question is as follows you can use the code segment displayed on the screen here so what happens when you use this is this global event listener ensures all unhandled rejections are caught in time let's move ahead to the next part of today's session which is about the intermediate candidates right the candidates who carry about one to two years of experience and trying to shift for a new position now the 11th question in the list for today what is middleware in express js the answer for this question is as follows our functions execute before the router handler and can modify requests or responses proceeding ahead we have the 12th question how does node.js handle file system operations now the answer using the built in fs model for reading writing and manipulating files asynchronously or synchronously 13th question in the list what is streams in node.js the answer is streams allow reading or writing data in chunks making them efficient for large files they are categorized as readable writable tuplex and transform streams now proceeding further we have the 14th question which is how can you secure a node.js application the answer for this question is as follows you can follow the steps mentioned below use https validate the input avoid using eval method then implement security headers and lastly sanitize user input now the 15th question and the last question in the theory section what is the difference between process dot next tick method and and set immediate method the answer for this question is as follows the basic difference between the two is process dot next tick method executes before the input output tasks and set immediate method executes after the input output task category where we will have some real time scenario based questions the first one amongst it is as follows it carries the number 16 How do you handle large file uploads efficiently in Node.js? Now the answer for this question, you can use this particular code segment here. What it does is, the request pipe or requ.pipe file stream method streams incoming file data directly into the file system, reducing the memory usage, making every process efficient and effective. Now the seventeenth question in the list will be the output for the following code. Now you have the code segment on the screen. You just have to read it out and understand the control flow. So the answer for this question is as follows. So the output will be this. So the answer for this question is as follows, as displayed on the screen. The output will be next tick immediate timeout two timeout one. So what exactly happened here? So firstly, processed next tick function executes before any other asynchronous code. set immediate function or method executes after the current input output cycle timers execute after their respective delays so if you deeply study this function what exactly happened is we kind of recreated one of the questions here remember the question where we discussed about process next tick method and set immediate method so this particular question or code segment is based on the same two methods process dot next tick method and set immediate methods proceeding further we have the 18th question how would you implement the caching in node.js application so the caching function can be executed using the following code segment here so what exactly happens or what does the control flow redis stores frequently access data reducing database queries and improving the performance now 
19th question in the list. How do you manage environment variables in Node.js application? So following code segment will help you. It loads environment variables from a .env file into process env preventing hard coded credential. Eighth question in the list. How would you handle a rate limiting in an express.js API? So following code segment can be used. This code segment will prevent excessive API requests from a single client enhancing the security. Now let's move into the next part of today's session where we will be discussing the questions for experienced candidates out of which the first category will be general and most frequently asked questions. Now the first part, the theory, you will have the first question which carries the number 21. What is worker threats in Node.js and how do they improve performance? The answer is as follows. Worker threats allow Node.js to execute CPU intensive tasks and separate threats preventing the main event loop from blocking. Now the 22nd question in the list. How does Node.js handle memory management and garbage collection? The answer is as follows. Node.js relies on V8 garbage collector which uses generational garbage collection, incremental marking and lazy keeping to optimize memory usage. Now the 23rd question in the list. What is clustering in Node.js and when should it be used? The answer, clustering allows running multiple instances of a Node.js application on different CPU cores to handle more concurrent requests. Now proceeding further, we have the 24th question in the list. What is a microservices architecture and how can Node.js be used to build it? Microservices break an application into smaller independent services communicating via APIs. Node.js can be used with Express.js and Docker to implement microservices. 25th question on the list. What are the best practices for optimizing a Node.js application? The answer. Some of the best practices for optimizing a Node.js application are as follows. First, use asynchronous operations efficiently. Second, enable gzip compression third use caching mechanisms fourth optimize database queries and fifth implement clustering for scalability now let's move ahead into the next category of this part which is about the real-time or scenario based questions and answers the first one amongst them, the 26th question of the tag how do you prevent memory leaks in a long running node.js process the answer is as follows to prevent memory leaks in a long-running Node.js process, we can follow the steps below. Close database connections properly. Use weak references for event listeners. Avoid global variables. Use tools like heap dump to monitor memory usage. Now the 27th question in the list. What will be the output of the following code? So here you can see a small code snippet on the screen. You just need to analyze the control flow and set the output for this. So the answer for this question is as follows. So the execution will yield in two comments which says event fire and another time event fire. The method registers an event listener and emit triggers it twice. So the message prints twice. Now proceeding further to the 28th question in the list, which is also a code based one. How do you implement logging in a Node.js application? The answer for this question is as follows. So log messages to a file for debugging and monitoring can be used. So you can use the following code snippet to implement logging in a Node.js application. Proceeding further, we have the 29th question. How do you implement authentication in Node.js application? So the answer for this question is as follows. JWT signs and verifies user's identity, ensuring secure authentication. Now we are at the 30th question for today's session. How do you debug performance issues in a React application? Now, interviewer is expecting you to know the common issues that you will be facing in a basic React application. Now, you can use the code segment given on the screen and mention the most common issues that you will be facing in a basic React application. So, these are the following ones. Connecting to the MongoDB, defining a user schema, and creating an API endpoint for all the users. So that brings us to the end of this session on the Node.js interview questions and answers. There is a huge demand in the market for Node.js developers. 
Big companies like Tech Mahindra, Wipro, TCS, Infosys are actively hiring Node.js developers. And also, the salary trends are really huge. Let's imagine if you're working with companies located in America, then you can expect an average salary of $50,000 to $70,000 per annum for a fresher. And if you're an intermediate candidate carrying about one or two years of experience, then you can expect a decent hike and the salary might range between $70,000 to $90,000 per annum. And if you're a highly experienced candidate carrying more than about four to five years of experience, then you can expect salaries ranging between $90,000 to $130,000. And it may also go beyond that based on the company you're working with and the project and also if the experience is a lot more, right? So if consider the companies in India and if you're a fresher, then you can expect a decent salary ranging from 4 lakhs to 8 lakhs per annum for a fresher. And if you're an intermediate candidate carrying about 1 to 2 years of experience, then you can expect a decent hike and the salary might now range between 8 to 12 lakhs per annum. And if you're an experienced candidate carrying more than 3 to 4 years of experience, then you can expect salary figures ranging from 12 lakhs to 20 lakhs per annum and even more based on the company you're working with and years of experience. Now, those were the company's hiring and salary trends of Node.js developers. If you have any queries regarding any of the topics covered in this session, or if you require any of the resources like the PPT or the list of questions that are used in this PPT, or any other questions that we have already enlisted, then please feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be happy to assist you at the earliest. Until next time, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from MindMagics. Thank <laughs> you.